What up, guys? Welcome to today's episode of the Jiu-Jitsu Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about taking the F word out of your jiu-jitsu, and we'll also talk about developing an, a healthy ego along with that. Uh, you know, a lot of times in jiu-jitsu, we talk about getting rid of the ego. We're going to talk about it kind of the opposite, about developing a healthy ego, because uh, as we'll talk about it one way or the other, you're going to have one, so you might as well learn how to use it the proper way and have some ideas on how to make it work for you instead of against you. So we'll get into some of those ideas in just a bit. Uh, big thanks to our sponsors for helping make the podcast happen. Charlotte's Web CBD. You guys can check them out at charlottesweb.com. The promo code is chujitsu 30 for 30% off the order. If you guys have never tried CBD before, give them a try. Check out their website. They've got a lot of different products, everything from THC-free versions to gummies, to tinctures, to balms and rubs and things like that for sore muscles. A lot of cool stuff. And again, they've also got a lot of different products that have different supplements along with them, everything from lion's mane mushrooms to different supplements to help you sleep. So I'm going to be testing, and I still am testing, the CBN gummies, which are supposed to be useful for sleep. Once I'm done testing them out for a bit, I'll let you guys know what I think. But again, if you guys want to try out any of their products, which I've taken lots of different ones, and many of you guys who've been listening to the podcast for a while know, you can check them out at charlesweb.com. Promo code is chujitsu 30 for 30% 30 off the order. Also, thanks to our sponsor, Epic Roll. EpicRollBJJ.com is the website. Uh, Matt, who is over there, runs Epic Roll. He is currently um, helping me get some new rash guards together. Uh, I, I really like them. I've been wearing the new black belt version of it. We're going to do ranked for the first initial order. Hopefully, you guys like them. Um, they should be out sometime right now. The time of recording this, we're in the early, like sort of mid-July. Probably in August, we'll, be, we'll start the order. Um, but I think they, they look really good and uh, they'll be available. And again, Epic Rolls, who I'm pairing up or partnering up to get those rash guards and shorts made for you guys because I really like all their no-gi gear. But anyway, with anything they have, whether it's their t-shirts, their no-gi gear, their you know rash guards, the gis, whatever, all of it and more, it's really good stuff. Great customer service as well. If you want to check them out, go to EpicRollBGJ.com. To save 20% on the order, use the promo code CHUJITSU20, C-H-E-W-J-I-T-S-U-2-0. If you guys would like to support the podcast directly, you can become a member of our Patreon, which is at patreon.com slash the Jiu-Jitsu podcast. When you join up on the Patreon, you'll get obviously access to an ad-free version of this podcast in case you don't like these ads. Uh, and then on top of that, you'll get ad access to a library of content we've created that has everything from warm-up routines that are specific to jujitsu areas and problems such as shoulders and knees and hips and things like that that we struggle with and some ways to loosen things up. Relatively short videos at around 20 minutes that you can add into your routine. On top of that, we have some seminars that I've recorded that are not released anywhere else. And then along with that are different episodes with guests that we've had on the podcast, as well as Eugene and I talking about some particular subject that we think you might, you guys might find uh, interesting. You also get preferential treatment. So if you have a question that comes through the Patreon, Eugene will get it and then we will answer it for a future episode as well. So you can do it with that if you guys want to join up patreon.com slash the jiu-jitsu podcast and guys last but not least if you would like to get my daily email you can do so by going to my website at shujitsu.net slash join when you join up you'll get access to an exclusive ebook that i give away it's free doesn't cost you anything it'll help you out with making your jiu-jitsu add it basically adding a little focus to your jiu-jitsu is the idea behind it to help you get more from your training we'll talk about focusing and why it's so important later on in this podcast and so again if you'd like to add a little more focus to your training get more more skill from it. It's a good book to get. And again, afterwards, you'll get my daily email, which goes into everything from books I'm reading to training tips, dieting tips, lifting weights, things like that, just anything and more that I think could be useful to you, both on and off the mats. All that and more, jujitsu.net slash join is the website, and then you can sign up there. And guys, with that said, let's jump into this podcast. <music> Like this right. is this is the battle of the ego, right? Like you're talking about, like you you have your jujitsu little brother, and mm -hmm. then like you know you bring him to the gym with you, and then now he catches you in something, and you know you obviously know you weren't going 100, percent but at the same time he legitimately cost caught, caught you, yes. so yeah. you're happy about it because you're like, yeah, man, good job, high five. But then at the same time you're like kind of frustrated with yourself. You're like, what's off with me today? You know? Yeah. Um. Yeah. And I get that because you know, again, my my job is like from you know, since you've known me has been a coach. And so you guys are coming in 
And my job is to make you guys better to the point yeah. where you eventually can submit me. Right. And many times you guys have, you've caught me and stuff. And, you know, sometimes it's like similar situation where, you know, I'm not going a hundred percent. I might be messing around with stuff, whatever. And you'll catch me like where, like, like, I don't even see it coming. Cause sometimes it's like, okay, I'm going to let him see if he can work this. It's like, yeah. you'll catch me in something and I didn't yeah. even see it coming. And, you know, it, it, in the beginning, when that starts happening, it's like you have to check yourself because there's a side of you. There's a little voice. Again, the I always talk about this, you know, the little voice inside of us. It's the weaker side of ourselves. The weaker side of yourself will get frustrated by it because it'll look at it, it'll look at it as basically your skills are diminished by this person getting the better of you. Um, but but it's not the case. It's just simply they, they caught you. And right. And this is mm -hmm. kind of what we're talking about on the podcast. Yeah. Interesting. Like, and, um, but you know, I had a, a, a way, like I talked to my wife about this stuff. If I, if I have a good day on the mats, I talked to my wife, I have a bad day. I talked to her and she kind of like has such a different perspective. Cause she's not, she's, she knows jujitsu to an extent, but she's not into it. Like I am. Well, she's, she's yeah. Like, she's not invested in it. So she right, can give you a fresh set of eyes. She just says, look, dude, she's like, and we actually, this morning we were talking about it. She goes, you're not the same person you were yesterday. Like it's, yeah. it's a new day. Like you, every day you're evolving, you're changing. Like you're, it's like you have a fresh start and that's kind of one of those things like ruminating and thinking about what happened. You can't change that shit. You can learn from it and give you a little extra sense of motivation or direction, whatever it is, but in a way, a little bit of a blow to like your kind of like your, your sense of self, right? I see myself yeah. as this person, as this coach and I shouldn't be, you know, to lower belts, I should be untouchable. That's yeah. not the case. That's not the way that works, right? Because the whole point of being a coach is to build these people up and to give them the capacity and the ability to be at your skill level or above. You know, that, that's yeah. the whole point. That's the sign of a good instructor and good coach is that like you're giving to these to these individuals, your your students, and they're getting better. Yeah. Well, and, and see, that's the issue, right? Is the shoulds and the shouldn'ts. Um, that's when we start. And this is like one of the big keys is like, if you're going to have a healthy ego is you can't go into it with like a, an expectation mm -hmm. because the expectation expectations, because just as you just said, we're constantly changing. We're constantly evolving on a cellular level, right? We're constantly replicating ourselves, yeah. replicating and changing. This is why we change as people throughout the years, right? We're, we're not the same person we were, you know, one day ago, 10 years ago, we're different, um, however slightly. And when you think about that, everybody else around us is changing, right? So again, that's happening for them too. And yep. so we're always in, in flux, we're always changing. And so when we start to set ex these expectations of shoulds and shouldn'ts and set expectations, you essentially, you essentially make yourself kind of fragile. You know, um, yeah. this is like, I, I remember sending out an email to the, to my email list and it was like, basically take the F word out of your jujitsu, take the F, F word, you know, take the F word out of your jujitsu, take the F word out of your life. Right. Which is don't be so fragile based upon expectations, you know, cause you think about any time you go into anything with an expectation, you set yourself up for failure because obviously none of us are batting for a hundred, right? No one's, no one's hitting everything that they, that comes their way. So whether you're on a date with a, a person and you really want this date to go well. So you're like, I really want them to, you know, like me or whatever. And then you go on the date and you're expecting this to happen. And it makes you kind of, you know, fragile because you can't expose who you are. You can't be relaxed with them and just be who you are because you're worried about saying the wrong thing. When yeah. you go to your jiu-jitsu training, right? You become fragile because like, what happens if you lose? I don't want to lose because I'm supposed to beat this person. And in turn, that makes you very rigid and unable to go for things. And if you do lose, which everybody's going to lose, everybody's going to get submitted. What happens? You feel frustrated by it and it's pointless, right? So it's like, you know, there's nothing wrong with having expectations based on your effort or what you put into it, right? But we can't have expectations about the outcome. It's why, to me, it's been one of the most important parts about having like a good, healthy ego, having a good, healthy mindset with pretty much anything that I do is that I don't set, like, even like it, it, this can sound stu so stupid, but even something as simple as setting up the 4th of July party that we had for the gym. I know that like when I was young, like when I was younger and I would set up these uh, events for the gym, I was always so, man, I hope this is a good one. I hope a lot of people show up or da, 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 right. And, you know, if we had one where maybe only like, you know, 15 people showed up or something, which is kind of small for our gym, I'd be like, damn, man, nobody wanted to like come hang out. Uh, you know, and I would, I would beat myself up over it. Now it's like, 
you know, like with the 4th of July party, my mindset of, of course, I would love to have it because I'd love to share it with more people. But in my mind, I'm thinking, you know what? I want to light off fireworks and I want to eat some hot dogs and hamburger or uh, hot dogs and hamburgers. Yeah. And uh, if anybody wants to join me, be happy to have you. If it's literally just me and like my my kid watching mm. this with my wife, like, hey, fine by me. You guys are missing out. And so when I think when you go into that kind of mindset with pretty much anything you do, you're far more effective you can take more chances you're more charismatic if you're around people i mean it just i i think it enhances everything and so um you know sort of to take that idea from my email over to here right like one of the big things that you want to do with your ego um especially related to jiu-jitsu is you want to take the f word out of it by making yourself not fragile because you're trying to set expectations everywhere mm -hmm. yeah i i think like for me it gives me a little bit of it gives me a little reset when those kind of situations happen. It gives me a little bit more focus on, okay, what do I want to work? What do I, I've been kind of going into training without a lot of, and we all do this. Yeah. It's just not, not a lot of intention, not a lot of focus, I'm just go, going in to go in. And now I'm like, okay, all right. I, I need to start sharpening things up again. Maybe I want to compete again. You know, we talked about some stuff in August, maybe coming up, maybe I want to compete I need to start really taking, having some kind of focus and intention. And I think that that's going to be helpful having these little, yeah, you know, I don't even call it a setback, but just having these little wake up calls. It's a little kick in the ass. A little kick in the ass. It's, 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 it's what it is. It's like, it's a kick in the ass. And again, it stings a little bit as it should, but it gets you to like, wake up. You're like, okay, I need to like, I need to get my head together. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And I think having some intention, some focus, because we can lose that for sure. You just yeah, I'm just going to jujitsu. It's Tuesday. I'm going to jujitsu. It's Friday. I'm going to jujitsu. I'm coaching, and obviously you have some techniques you're showing, but maybe it's some things you're working on yourself. You can put more focus on those. And, and again, be okay with getting submitted or losing a little bit. And pra it's practice. We talked about losing in practices. It's it's not really you're losing. Maybe getting submitted, but it doesn't mean shit doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things it's like it doesn't take away that i'm a black belt or somebody else is a blue belt or, or purple whatever it is it, it's just uh first of all we all have off days anyways but number mm -hmm. number two it's just a good i've always done well with these situations and i've always needed them i think and there's i think it was coming and it, well, it, it was like it's like building up like i almost got caught a couple times from training with some other like just kind of not really being too focused or too serious now i'm like I'm not saying i need to go whoop people's asses i just need to be more more intentional and i think it's a good thing for me to focus on well and, and think about it this way it's it's a practice right like we think about everything as a practice and whether you're talking about jiu-jitsu whether you're talking about philosophy every it's all seen as a practice and so again it's a practice like you said you, you got you got off the track and here you are you're back here um the focus things i think are really important because i know for me like being like self-employed and um as you are to a degree, right? Like I can have the most productive days sometimes. And then sometimes I can have days where I felt like I was going all over the place, but I got nothing done. Mm -hmm. And usually the defining thing that separates those two things is whether or not the night before I had a plan going into the next day, you know, like if I if like at nighttime, I'll sit down like, here's the things that I'd like to get done today or tomorrow. And if I wake up with that, I typically am good to go. Like I can immediately wake up and I can get after everything. Whereas if I don't have that in place, a lot of times it's like, I'm just everything. I'm just going with the flow and whatever pops up, I'll get to that. And, um, you know, I typically find that that's one of the defining things. Uh, I was, I was curious, um, because you're a bit of a, a ruminator and I at times can be, have you ever read the book, the worry cure? Mm. The um, worry cure. Okay. Yeah, the okay. worry cure. If anybody's, if anybody is, you know, listening here, and maybe sometimes either you struggle with some anxiety or, um, like rumination or just irrational, like silliness going on in your mind. There's a book called The Worry Cure by Robert Lee Leahy. I guess it is L E A H Y, and um, basically c cognitive behavioral therapist. And essentially, the book is nothing more than you know going through some different ideas, and it lays out a bunch of different essentially like exercises that you can perform when you're hitting those, those moments, right. To basically essentially like really take a step back and look at go like, what the hell is wrong with me? You know, like for me it would be, I would have some irrational 
like anxiety towards something. Mm -hmm. And then it was, you know, you go through the book and it's like, how many times have you had this irrational anxiety? Uh, lots of times, right? How many times has it ever like came to actually anything? Never. So what's the point? You know what I mean? And when you start seeing that, it allows you to kind of like, it doesn't, it doesn't instantly fix it, but you get really good. The more you practice this, right? The better you get at it and the, the more you can eventually just throw it to the side and disconnect from it instead of letting it take root um, in your mind and sort of, mm -hmm. you know, then taking over. But it's a good book. Um, it does, doesn't really take that long to read through, but it's uh, it's useful and has a lot of useful tools inside of it. It's interesting how we create these scenarios and these like doom and gloom things in our minds and then mm -hmm. never really comes to fruition. Like it's just, it's so much bigger in our imagination than it is in reality. Like we create these huge things and worry about it and we expect like the worst outcome and then no, nothing. And that could be a, a number of situations, a number of, of things, but it usually comes to, for the most part, it comes to be nothing as nearly as severe or intense as you imagined it in your mind would be. Right. It's like, I think Seneca said it, it was like, we suffer more in our imaginations than reality. Yes. Right. right. I mean, hundred percent true, right? Like we always build situations up into something they're not. Um, and you know, most of what we're dealing with for most of us in like, especially the Western world is all imaginary, right? It's not even real problems. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, they're, <laughs> they're real <laughs> problems, but what I mean by this is that like your life is not being threatened. You're not getting ready to die or anything like that. It's literally just made up stuff like for instance like us us in jujitsu you know the fact that we get upset about it, it's all made up nobody yeah. cares nothing changes in your life if someone beats you when you're rolling right but to us it's very meaningful so therefore we we care um but most of our stuff is or even sometimes even like again, many of you guys if you're self-employed you probably know this thing you start to put these high standards of yourself for, for production and you're like you have to be kind of the you have to be your boss and essentially sometimes you can become like a slave driver pushing yourself instead of being like, Hey man, back off a little bit. Cause you're trying to meet some sort of number that you set for yourself. That's just some random number sometimes. Right. And you're trying to do this much work or whatever it is. And you have to take a step back and remember like this, you know, again, we, we made this stuff up. This is what we made up. Um, mm -hmm. But again, on the podcast, talking about the idea of developing a, a healthy ego. Let's talk about what the ego is first. I had I read a definition or I found a definition. I want to read it. It's from the All Cambridge right. di Dictionary. The Cambridge Dictionary. I don't know. I just found one. No, no, it's uh, fine. It says, it's fine. Your idea or opinion of yourself, especially your feeling of your own importance and ability. Mm -hmm. So. That's kind of what this, I thought this was a good definition. I think it's, it it's your self-construction, right? It's yeah. like who you think you are. Um, you know, and then obviously you, that can then attribute to your importance about something, because if you, you know, you see yourself doing this, that, and whatever, you can see yourself as a very important person. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times I think of our ego as nothing more than a collection of stories that we tell ourselves because, you know, for instance, if I said, Hey, Eugene, who are you? You're probably good. Like, like, say if I don't know you and I say, hey, Eugene, like, well, who are you? Well, you know, like, well, tell me more about you. who are you? You're probably going to tell me stories. I'm a, you know, Russian immigrant and I did this and da, 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 da. I do. You know, you'll tell me stories about who you are. And those stories are basically how we connect to ourselves. We're, we're, we're a collection of narratives. And those narratives, you know, they go to everything that we do, right? So you're, I'm a, I'm a black belt in jujitsu and I'm pretty good. And, you know, I can typically submit these people or that people. This is whether, whether we think about it consciously or not, it goes through our heads. And then when you get onto, when you get on the mats, a lot of times we start to find the pecking order in the pecking order. You could take away the belts and the pecking order is still there. I, in wrestling, it was the same way. I knew who I could beat. I knew who I couldn't. I knew who I would go tit for tat with, who, you know, back and forth. And so again, um, you know, that ego is just a construction of who you think you are in this space. Um, and I think it's a, it's a useful topic to talk about because a lot of times I think jujitsu gets it wrong because jujitsu, right. You hear it all the time, lose your ego, right? Yeah. I, I don't think we use that term right because it's like we don't want to lose our ego. We need it. I mean, it's what we want. One is you can't lose it. You're going to have it regardless. There's no losing it. It's like it's like telling someone like um, as they get older to just not have sex. Right. Good, good luck with that one. <laughs> right. Like probably not going to work. Right. Better to equip you with certain information so you can be intelligent with your decisions. Well, likewise, with your ego, you can't lose it. You got it. There ain't no getting rid of it. And if you got rid of it, it, it would be 
disastrous for you as a person because who are you if you don't even have a construction of yourself right um and then especially think about even competitions for competitions you better have a pretty strong ego you got to know that you're pretty darn good right you can't walk in there like oh gee golly i'm, I'm okay here what you know that kind of thing um mm -hmm. and so i think a lot of times in jiu-jitsu we get it wrong and so i think it's worth talking about like okay the actual ego and then like what is it and then also talking about ideas on harnessing it and also tempering it depending on the situation that you're coming from because you know some people they have this delusional sense of their abilities right which is where we would a lot of times tell them to lose their ego because their their egos inflated with a sense of delusion um or, or, or over self-importance right and then there's the other side too where people can come in and they have a lack of any of it right and you can see this all the time where people where people many of us know someone who has had a, a very decent competent level of skill and ability in something but then when you talk to them they're almost self-defeatist right mm -hmm. they, they kind of like beat themselves up over stuff and you're like if there's been so many of us that i we all know someone like this where if you could get their if you could get their head out of the way the person would be so much better. I mean, I've met so many athletes who men physically had just amazing gifts, but mentally they were weak and they didn't have this strong sense of that. They were really, they, they could take care of whatever was in front of them. Um, and so that was something that they had to develop. It was the opposite of this inflated sense of self. Yeah. I, I wonder what that, I mean, there's probably so many reasons why there's, you know an inflated oh, ego oh. versus a, i think it would just be here for hours and hours that's that um, is like that's where like psychologists and stuff and therapists right, right? like dig into that stuff that's like you're getting into deep deep seated like everything from your life that's culminating in childhood that, right? trauma childhood and trauma 100 percent, yeah. right um i know for me like for instance like one of my issues was that i grew up like i got jumped when i was in seventh grade so you know, got the crap beat out of me by 17, 18 year olds. And I was 11, 12. And then that led to me never going outside. So I had this, I had, first off, I had like any physical confidence stolen from me because I felt like I was just weak and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And then I got, I got really overweight because I wasn't going outside anymore. wasn't exercising. And so I got oh, basically obese. I was a big chunky, chunky kid. And I remember that when you go to school, and you know you get made fun of and you hate the way you feel in your own skin and i mean all these things right it's terrible um you know like it took me a long time i remember when i started to wrestle i was pretty good initially but i was kind of like the people that were talking about who didn't realize how good they were because they were like you know like I'm me and I know that I'm trash and that I'm fat and this and that, you know, you have this sense of yourself, but then what ended up happening for me was like, physically I was changing, but my mind was so slow to update. You know, it was like the, 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 the hardware was updating, mm -hmm. you know, but the software, yeah. we didn't have, we didn't have a software update for a while. And I remember it was through wrestling where I did things that proved to me that like, Oh, I I'm, I'm better than I think I am. You know, like, so even though I feel this way about me, I have evidence to back up the fact that, oh, I'm actually better than what I think. Um, and so therefore, like, oh, okay, cool. Like, you know, then I'm starting to get the, the update. But I kind of then went the other direction where, you know, now I think I'm hot shit. And then I remember, you know, going into jujitsu and I have this sort of over sense of self where i'm like i'm this great wrestler and i'm gonna smash everybody and then you go into jujitsu and you're just getting like murked by everybody and like oh maybe not you know so again uh, it can go a lot of different ways you can overcorrect right like you, you get the phys so the physical gets online and it takes a little while for the mental to catch up and then the mental maybe gets ahead of the physical <laughs> Or your abilities essentially yeah. and then you gotta need your physical to catch back up yeah um yeah and it can happen a... it can happen that way too where some people sure. come into it with like the physical like the physical being lagging behind sure. but mentally they're like oh i'm great right and they have no reason to base that off of anything they weren't wrestlers they weren't whatever they just they just think they're going to be amazing and obviously you know they they if they get into any sort of combat related sport they yeah. uh they are in for a rude awakening yeah so like initially when we get into jiu-jitsu most of us are going to struggle a little bit and i think dealing with that that can have you know you have white belts that constantly will say i'm just not good i'm not getting it i'm not you know what's 
what's the situation there? Do you think like, how do, how do you help those students get out of that rut? I know I, I would say like physically, you know, they start getting a little better, but like sometimes it's just, they're struggling, continue to struggle. Is there a way we can encourage those newer practitioners to start building up their ego a little bit? Cause that's really what they need. Yeah. So I think again, a lot of times our ego will be built up with evidence that we can back it up with. Right. So again, like hard, real evidence, uh, meaning you actually did something not like i don't think that you're going to develop a good deep sense of confidence just by like giving yourself affirmations and telling you i am enough and i feel great what that's all fine and dandy but what you really need to do is you need to do something to develop the confidence and say like no i actually did this and because there's something powerful to that where no matter what you realize that you have the power to change things or the power to do certain things, right? Yeah. Um, so I think it's a, it's a thing of doing if you really want to change it. Right. And we talked that deep about sense that. Of yeah, we talked about the philosophy of doing, right? Yeah. You want to have that deep sense of confidence that comes from that. It's also the back the the backup that you have where if you start to question yourself, you go back to the facts, right? You say, well, like, well, this is what actually happened, even though I felt like this. I felt really nervous for this tournament, but look what I, I won, gold medal. Or, you know, I, you know, think that i'm still a fat guy or whatever but like i have the evidence here to back it up look i have abdominal muscles now you know that kind of thing so you get evidence but so i think the really it comes down to is that in order to get all of that he goes back to the same old stuff um that is required for pretty much anything so what i'm about to say i don't mean it to any slight to anybody but if you'd like to be a better person become better than what you are now and or to be honest, like superior to like 90% of people, all you really have to, and it sounds terrible and I don't mean mm -hmm. it in that way. All you have to do is whatever it is that you want to do, do that thing and then do it consistently for a long period of time. That's it. I mean, that's, that's the start. Now I'm not saying you can't tweak things and adjust them and everything else, but that's the start, right? Cause think about it, like to lose weight, it isn't complicated, right? What do you have to do? You got to go do diet and exercise. It's very simple. Now, most people could tend diet and exercise very easily for more like one day, right? Maybe even a week. How about six months? How about 90 days, right? It's hard, right? It's difficult. Like, you know, it starts off easy, but then you start getting, you getting uh, cravings for things, or maybe yeah. life gets in the way you, you have to fight for it, right? Um, lots of people can go to the gym and lift weights, all right? Cool, lift weights. Can you do it for like a year? Can you, I mean, lifting weights really takes a long time to get the benefits from. Can you do it for years on end? Mm -hmm. Jiu-jitsu, how many people come in and they're like, yeah, this is going to be great. This is going to be amazing. Da, 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 da. And then they quit, you know, within a few months because it gets difficult. And they're in this stage right now where you're talking about where they're kind of like, I suck, whatever. Understand this, at least from my standpoint, you know, I know there are some different people out there, but for me, anything that I've ever experienced in life where I've been successful at it in, on some level, right? Whether that's jujitsu, whether it's with the business stuff, YouTube, whatever, all of it. I sucked at all of it. Like I was not naturally good at any of it. You know, I came into wrestling and got smoked. I came into jujitsu, got smoked. Um, you know, my, my early video attempts that I made were really cringy. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the first, lots of the first things that I did for, for the business were absolute utter failures, right? And, and this is just the price you pay. You pay with failures. It's the currency you pay for your future success with just the way that it is. And so you got to be really okay with that. And so understand that, like, if you want to be better than most people, all you got to do is be consistent about it. Cause most people can't deal with that part. It's the hardest damn thing to deal with it. Like you can't deal with that initial struggle to the point where you eventually make it a habit. You know, because then eventually, like if you can do things long enough, eventually it becomes habitual and then you're not even thinking about it. Um, and most people don't get to that point. And so when it comes to being in those moments or those periods where you feel like you're suck, you don't suck. I was talking to someone the other day about this. You don't suck. You just haven't, you're not, you're not trained enough. The simple as that, right? Like I don't, very few people I've ever seen come out of the box were like amazing even guys like um, Brandon Reed, like one of my students, right, uh, was a great wrestler, came into jiu-jitsu, was, was okay. I mean, he was tough and scrappy, but he wasn't like – he was not a natural by any stretch. But he's very studious with his, with his learning, and he focuses really hard, and he works really hard, and he's very, like, consistent with it. And he gets better. He's getting better rapidly. Um, but, again, he was by no means – like, he, I, he, he did not come into jiu-jitsu just, you know, immediately just, like, 
doing this and catching on to everything. He had his own struggles, had his own problems, everything else, and still does. And so um, understand this idea of suck. If you mentally say to yourself, you suck, you you suck. You've already, you've already determined it to be so. I think the best way to look at it is, ah, I just need more training because that's generally the answer for most of us. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the struggle is normal. We've talked about that. Like there, it's a buy-in, the struggle of, you know, and failing, but continuing to work at those things is that's, that's part of the process. I, I think having the expectation that, you know, we talk about different expectations. You should have some non the result, but have an expectation that you're probably going to struggle a bit and that's very sure. normal. And that's kind of par for the course. Yeah, because if you have an expectation, again, if you have an expectation to not have one because you know deep down that you're going to like fail, you're going to eat shit sometimes, right? Like when, when you go into it oh. with that mindset, it's easier to absorb it because it wasn't like it was some sort of surprise, right? Um, you know, it's like when some sort of, when you think of like natural disasters that come when they have some sort of warning system. A lot of times they're not nearly as bad as the ones where all of a sudden it's just like an earthquake that happens and there was no warning for it and just things happened. It's the same thing, right? Like if you if you go into it and you know some bad stuff's going to happen, you can prepare for it. You can say, you know, I'm going to lose sometimes and that's okay if it happens. You know, it's part of the process. But when you go into it with this mindset of like that, you're not supposed to lose or you're not going to lose. So, you know, like what makes you think that you're the one person in the universe that didn't have to go through this? <laughs> I mean, everyone does. You're not special. You're not special like one way or the other. Like we're all in this and we're all dealing with the same stuff one way or the other. And we all went through it. Um, it's one of the reasons why, again, we respect people that have a black belt in jujitsu for the most part. Um, we don't respect them necessarily for we respect what they did as far as being dedicated to something for a long period of time, because we all understand that it's very difficult mm -hmm. um, to stick with something and actually develop the skill. And again, skill in just in general, skill is difficult. doesn't really matter the modality, right? Like skill is difficult. It's, it's yeah. hard to get. And that's why we respect it. That's why when you listen to a musician who can take an instrument and they can do things with their hands and their body in concert with this, this piece of equipment, and it does something that we look at and we just marvel at it. Right? Why do we marvel at it? Because we can't do it. Right? We look at it, we're like, man, that's that's amazing. Right. And so anytime you see skill, we all sort of take a step back and we have a respect for it because we know how difficult difficult it is, regardless of whether or not we sort of explicitly acknowledge that or not. Mm -hmm. What do you think about building confidence or helping build up an ego for white belts or beginners? What do you think are some ideas with that? You mean if they like if they're like struggling if they have yeah, this sort they're of like struggling like sense of uh, self? if they're struggling and just building confidence in them and giving them you know because I think you constantly eat shit and you feel like there's no way out you're gonna just continue to, you're probably gonna quit you're not gonna feel any light the end of, you're not gonna see any light at the end of the tunnel so like there's got to be things um, you need to focus on and they're gonna be probably more smaller picture things they're not gonna be like I'm gonna submit this person maybe other things um, in, in my opinion I would say. We talked about kind of having little victories. It could be like, all right, I didn't get my guard passed or I didn't get submitted this round, things like that. So start on the lower end and work your way up. So what are maybe some ideas besides those that you think can help build confidence in like newer grapplers that are struggling? Well, again, I think ultimately confidence is going to come from the sense of like when you actually do something that's worthwhile and you develop that in like reality, right? So we can give ourselves little wins and things to kind of keep us going. Mm -hmm. But I think the confidence just comes from simply, you know, eventually as you train, you will develop the ability to do things and your confidence will come as a byproduct of that. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think that sometimes you have to have the confidence because you base it on something real, especially with jujitsu, you know, it's different if say, if like you're, you know, you're online, you know, let's say as an example, and you're like an influencer or something, and you're trying to, uh, this is again, always my rant. Um, you're like a business influencer trying to tell people how to run their business, mm -hmm. but you've never ran a business. Um, you know, you can go up there and you can fake it. But when it comes to jujitsu, it's very different. You can't fake skill. You're either getting smoked by someone during a roll or you're not, right? There's no way to get around that. And so for us, we, you know, we have to develop like real skills and real confidence. And so again, it comes with each other. As you develop the skills, you get confident and you have to train. I think the big thing is, is to structure your mindset so that you can get rid of any of the negative association with some of the, the setbacks that you have in your mind, like some of the, the negative sides to training, if you want to consider them that, the failures, the mistakes, everything else. 
and to essentially like structure things in a way that allow you to, to keep going. So as an example, I knew a guy who it's kind of funny. He would basically take a book and like, let's say if it was a really long book, he would take that book and literally cut it into like three or four pieces, mm. like chunks, three or four chunks. Gotcha. And he would do it. So this way he would have the accomplishment of, I just finished this chunk, right? So instead of having this big, thick book that seems daunting, he'd be like, ah, I got this one chunk and it was much more manageable, right? And again, you know, we could laugh at that and say, I can't read a book, but how many people have looked at a daunting book and go, man, that looks, that looks like a lot. And then, you know, you look at it and say, well, what if we cut this down? Oh, that, that does each one of those by itself doesn't look so bad. And when you think about what it, really, when it comes to developing skill, all it is, is a collection of little things like that, you know, like, yes, getting a black belt and training for, you know, eight to 12 years, that seems like a daunting task. But if we say train one day train one week, right? Mm -hmm. And it's those little steps that add up. They're like turning the page. It's those little additions that, that eventually lead up to things, right? Yeah. The um, chunking who, who do we, and, uh, Andy Sumpf, right? Andy Sumpf talked about it, you know, yeah. and it's, it's a, it's a very common idea, right? Um, yeah. and it, you know, even you as a parent, right? The idea of like raising a kid could maybe seem daunting, right? But what do you do? You do, you, you understand this better than I do. Cause you've been a father longer. You just do it one day at a time. <laughs> You have to, and you're going to have good days and bad days. Man. That's right. You just know that's going to happen. Some days your kids are going to be like on it. They're going to do everything mm -hmm. you ask. And I have to be on like repeating yourself. And some days it's going to be just like, you just find yourself constantly trying to get them to do one simple task. And, uh, yeah. And some days you're like, damn kids are, I don't want any more kids or yeah, kids, yeah, yeah. Are, kids are the worst. And then some days uh -huh. you're like, Oh my goodness. You're so lucky to have little little people that look up to you and uh -huh. um just the joy of, of kids is, is awesome but yeah it's hard it's so hard. just just like anything else you get the idea right so we're, sure. so using that idea what you have to do at least in my opinion and this is something that's been useful to me so take this for you guys listening what you will think about little small things that you could consider wins or something that, you know, makes the whole process enjoyable. So yeah. for me, I've always been drawn to the camaraderie, um, the group. I just like being around on the mats, even from a long time ago. Like when the classes were over, I would be the guy lingering around in class, hanging out with people, talking, because I enjoyed the social aspect of it. I enjoyed being on the mats and then talking to people. And you could just communicate with people in a way that sometimes I felt like you couldn't in day-to-day -day life. But, you know, in the process of choking each other out, you kind of it takes away your social mask to some degree. Yeah. Um, I, I always enjoyed the exercise aspect of it. Right. It's just a great workout. I'm burning a ton of calories. I feel exhausted afterwards. Mentally, I feel great. All the stress that I've had, whatever I walked into that day is just dumped out. So I don't have any stress when I leave. I'm driving home. Some guys cut me off and I'm just smiling and waving at him. I don't care. I, I feel amazing. Um, one of my girlfriends years ago, she would talk about how if she wanted to buy something, like let's say she wanted me to buy her a gift or something, like wanted me to go buy her shopping or whatever, she would let me train in the morning. She's like, she would always try to go, go train in the morning. And then she would come try to catch me. Hey, let's go to the mall. Yeah. And she said, I was always so much nicer and so much more, uh, uh, much more liberal with my spending yes. when I had just got done training. Cause I'm in a happier mood. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and then there's also the idea of like the learning. I enjoy the learning, but also too, like for me, whenever I learn techniques, I try to break those techniques down into little chunks where instead of thinking like, as an example, instead of thinking about the guard pass as a whole, which can be, I mean, you know, passing a really good guard player's guard can be daunting. I would start with, like, let's say I'm trying to get to a particular guard passing position. My initial focus will be just let me get to that position. Can I get to that position over and over again? And if I can, that's a win. And then, you know, can I progress from there? You know, can I do those things? Or when I was learning how to play the guard as a white belt and I didn't really want to learn how to play guard, I would start by simply, can I keep my guard closed yeah. instead of letting them open and pass? Okay, good. Can I open my guard and go for submissions and then reclose my guard without them passing? Okay, good. I didn't get a submission, but they didn't pass. Okay, good. And then, you know, you progress from there and you start these little, little basically notches forward that move your, move you in the needle, move your needle in the right direction. Again, you're, you're still not doing much of anything, but you're focused on just like just incrementally taking a step forward towards whatever you're going to do. Um, yep. And I think that that's really useful because, again, most people can, when you break things down in that manner, you can you can basically put some points on the board.
you know, and, and a lot of times we can look at the big goal and we can forget like a lot of times the big goals are simply just a collection of these little small steps. And if you can focus on those small steps, I think that I think that it makes it a little bit easier to manage. And that's been true for me in jiu-jitsu. It's been true for me also with the business and everything else I do. There's a lot of benefits, you know, obviously, like you mentioned with jujitsu, the camaraderie and the community aspect of it and just how good you feel afterwards. And and also, I think that one thing I didn't when I first started training, I didn't really have a goal or a purpose for training. I was just doing it. I didn't know why I was doing it. I have a better understanding of that now. Um, I think if you can develop and that's going to change, but I think if you can develop like what's your reason for jujitsu? Is it to lose weight, self-confidence, What you know? have a community, learn a martial art, whatever it is, having that idea can also kind of be in a way you're guiding light. Like, you know, that's the ultimate purpose for you. So like hitting those, you know, having some, some times on the mats where you're, it's not going exactly your way. I think you can kind of move past those. Cause you know what your ultimate goal with jujitsu is. Mm -hmm. Sure. hundred yeah. percent. You know, but at the same time, sometimes like you don't have to have some overarching, definitive reason you know sometimes you like you can just do it because you want to do it and that's perfectly okay yeah. and that's you know? how i was and i didn't have a reason when i first started i didn't and that's know. okay because you don't know a lot about like you learn all these things about jujitsu as you're in it longer you learn about the camaraderie and like you start to meet people and you actually hey i like this person you know i enjoy talking to them and you realize how how nice it feels, you know, to have a tough training session. And then afterwards, just kind of hanging out and mm -hmm. having, like you said, that social mask is completely off. Like your, your guards down essentially in some ways, like you're just, you're more well, everybody's vulnerable. Not trying to, everybody's not trying to be fake, you right. know, because think about it, right? Like when you go into the gym, it just, I don't know, I mean, not all gyms are, our, are like our gym, but a lot no. of them are, you know, where let's say for instance, if you know, as well as I do, a lot of the jokes, a lot of the humor, a lot of the things we say, if we were in like a traditional corporate America setting, bro, we would all be fired. You know what I mean? Fly, yeah. You know, it, but again, it's like, but you think about it, we have, uh, we have all sorts of different people of different colors, races, sex, creeds, religions, the whole deal. And everybody's coming together and we're all like messing with each other in all sorts of different ways that the greater part of society would say that we shouldn't be because it's not nice or whatever. But for us, it's like, that's how we, we're all just messing around with each other and it's, and we have a good time because we're not trying to be fake. We're just like, we're just goofing off and we're just acting the way that we want to act. And we don't feel a need to try to, again, put on that, that, like I said, that social mask where we try to measure our, all of our things that we say, we're just talking, we're just being ourselves. Um, you know, because again, at, the, at some point when you're in the middle of, you know, getting choked and choking someone else, the need to feel like you have to measure and watch everything that you say, it kind of goes out the window. Cause you're like, no, we're cool. Like, I don't have to, I can just be myself and you can be yourself. And cause again, both of us have had each other's like essentially there are health and safety in each other's hands. And we were, we were good stewards of it. So we're cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, there's a. Uh... A lot of honesty with, with training i think like if you're not going to lie your way through being good at jujitsu like i think you, you have to be honest when you're on the mats because if you say you're you're a certain skill level you're going to get exposed if you're not i mean it's just, that's the long and short of it and and that's one of the ways i think we talk about i, I want to talk about competition i think one of i'm not a big competitor by any means i don't compete i've competed every belt multiple times competing for me was something I felt like not everybody has to do, but for me personally, it was something I felt like I needed to do because it gave me a true account of, of my skill set. Am I where I need to be? Do I have shit to work on? Um, is my ego inflated? Right. Is my ego true? Like, am I where I'm, you know, it feels good to go out there and be like, all right, I had some good matches. I won a couple matches, whatever, or I won this tournament or I got second place. Doesn't matter. I was able to play my game. I feel like I'm, I'm competitive at my belt belt rank that's one of those things too i think competition is really important for two reasons it gives you a true sense of, of your skill set and it also can can tell you you know if if you have an inflated ego it can it can let you know what that is and if also if your ego is actually very low you feel very low about yourself or, or your skill set you may go out there and surprise yourself and be like man i actually i do belong at this belt rank or the skill level i'm pretty decent yeah, you know, and so think about this one is that you, you maybe you don't think about this, but you know, you do things that freak you out a little bit and you you do them. 
you know, some people, some people run away from the things that freak them out, right? You like find stuff that kind of freaks you out and you go do it, right? And it makes you nervous or whatever else, but you do it anyway. Um, that's good, right? Because that's kind of the mindset you want to have. And that's one of the things that jiu-jitsu competitions, competitions in general, um, can give you is this sense of, and, and by the way, this can sort of bleed over into everything else did for me, you know, when you have a competition, you are typically nervous. There's questions going through your mind. And sure, maybe you go into the situation and like you second guess yourself, but then you end up winning. That's great, right? But what happens if you go in there and you completely bomb and you get beat, right? Well, even if you get beat, it's still reassuring to know that, you know, hey, everything, like I failed and I'm fine. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm not dead. I'm still here. It's, it's fine. And just like we were talking earlier, right? Like our minds blow things up into proportions that's not even close to the reality. Yeah. And that can be useful, right? To, to be able to take a loss, to look at it and go, oh, I can, I can handle this. So even when things go sideways and I get obliterated, I can still handle this. So that's the worst case scenario I've experienced that it's not so bad. I can deal with this. So then it allows you to have a, a certain level of freedom because you're no longer afraid of whatever you imaginary, your imagination thought it was going to be like. But again, that, that can even be, that can be beneficial, right? So the idea was sometimes with competitions, again, I know not everybody wants to compete, but it can be beneficial for a lot of reasons because no matter what, you're going to come out of there with something useful. If you win, great. You're going to have the feeling of winning a success. Everybody loves that. If you lose a match, you might get a lot of details on your techniques and your game that might work. And even if you go out there and you just get smoked and it's like, what should I work on? There's just so many different things, too much to choose from. You still went into a situation that you tested yourself, you failed, you came up short, but you could, you could take it, right? You could handle it. And understanding that allows you then to progress. Now you can even say that with jujitsu, right? On the, in the gym, not even just competitions, right? Go, you go with the toughest person in the gym and they beat the brakes off you. You handled it. You're all right. You know, there's nothing to be afraid of. And so that stuff can be important because then you take that same idea over to pretty much anywhere else, right? I know that with like the business, I'll just use it as an example, because that was a freaky time for me taking like, this is 2010. This is not, you know, this is not like the, a quote entrepreneurial world that we're in now where everybody and their mom has a business, a side hustle, and they're putting entrepreneur on their Instagram channel uh, handle, right? Like this is back in the day where like nobody was really talking about this stuff. And I just wanted to be a jiu-jitsu coach and I was going to do it. Well, when I took the leap, it was nerve wracking. And what gave me some sort of some sort of comfort, I guess you would say, is that I looked back at all my jiu-jitsu competitions and wrestling competitions and MMA fights and basically said to myself, you know, even if this thing goes sideways for a little bit, I generally do all right for myself if I just step out and do it. You know, even in jiu-jitsu competitions, sure, I've lost some, but generally as a whole, I've gotten better and I've won more than I've lost. MMA fights, one of the most nerve wracking things I've ever done, you know, because you're you're putting yourself in a situation where you could do permanent damage to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where some where you're locked in a ring with someone and they're they they get to do things to you that are 100 percent illegal outside of that ring, right? Which is a weird thing to think about. We get to basically have assault on each other. And in that setting, nerve wracking. But again, I, I'm from doing it for so long, you feel the ability to be able to bet on yourself because you've been through so much and you're like, well, if I can deal with this, I can just put that same effort and intensity towards this. And uh, that's been really useful to me. And I think, again, competitions and testing yourself and finding new challenges just in general can be useful to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, just uh, creating some resiliency. You know, you can understand that you can go through go through some tough situations or some situations don't turn out the way that you want or perfectly and you can recover and you can come back from it and you get submitted, you know, and you can go back the, to the gym the next day or, or the following week and, and start working on stuff and get better. I think you can start to utilize the, the, the information and, and you, and you're okay, right? As long as you don't get injured, things like that, you're okay. You're back on the mats. And I think you will, you know, as a white belt, for, for, for me, it was like, oh, I had like, I, it's like I condensed quite a bit of training, you know, from, from obviously you have more 
focused training leading up to competition, more dialed in, and then you have your competition and you've done something really nerve wracking, getting back on the mats with your buddies in your gym that you feel comfortable and it feels like it feels way easier. And I feel like you've progressed, even though if you don't think you have, you've got some direction, some focus now. And I think it really helps your game immensely. I think it, you definitely pack in more. It almost like, I don't know, it does more to your training time. Like, I feel like you feel like you've trained a lot more than you have with that small little competition. Yeah, I've seen some weird, I don't want to say weird, but some interesting results post-competition. I mean, one, when you're leading up to a competition, you typically train differently with a far with far more focus because you know you have this thing coming up where you don't want to go out there and look stupid, right? So you typically train harder. But I've noticed that I've had these situations where guys would go compete, and regardless of the outcome, some of them bombed, some of them did really well regardless of the outcome, they would come back almost changed, right? They would come back and I, you know, there were some really Mm -hmm. like really big examples of this where someone would go from being the softest guy in the gym to all of a sudden he's got some grit intensity to him and you you kind of just, you're surprised about it. One of the ones that I noticed early on in my jujitsu as a blue belt, um, there was a local competition and we had the, the nickname for him. We all had nicknames back then. The guy's nickname was 007. He had a cool car, so it was like 007. You got it. He had like a cool, had a cool car. So he went and competed, and he was kind of soft. You know, he just, he was a great guy. I loved him. He was a cool guy, kind of soft. Um, just you could kind of toy with him, whatever. He went and competed, and I mean, he got, got destroyed. But he came back on Monday following the Saturday competition. And I remember he was gritty. Like he was just, he was hard to deal with. He was surviving longer and it was just different. And I remember when me and my other buddy who was a blue belt at the time, we were close friends. We we were leaving. And afterwards we were talking. And when we were talking, we said, man, like, did you roll double O today? Yes, I did. How did he feel? He felt tough today, you know, because we would make, we would talk about how like easy he was to control. And then all of a sudden now he's coming at you. You're like, what? two days this happened right so i mean there can be some serious changes from a, one competition in just a couple of days i'm not saying this is the the result that everybody has but i've seen this happen more times uh than i can remember off the top of my head it's happened a bunch and so again you had the competitions in basically testing your limits and experiencing that whole thing it, it can change you a bit and i've mm-hmm. seen it happen lots of times all right, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed the podcast. Hopefully you got something from it, some idea to chew on and to implement into your game. Um, again, lots of things that you could take from it, uh, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you have any questions from the podcast or maybe there was something that stood out with you, uh, feel free to send us a message to the Instagram that we have for the Jiu-Jitsu podcast. Or if you're a patron member, you can obviously do it there. Big thanks to our sponsors for helping make the podcast happen. Charlotte's Web CBD. You can check them out at charlottesweb.com. The promo code is Jiu-Jitsu30 for 30% off the order. Again, if you guys have tried other CBD products or if you've never tried CBD, either way, check Charlotte's Web out. They're one of the premier CBD companies out there. Um, they make it a, a really well-made product, a product that's third-party tested to ensure the purity and what's actually in the bottle is what is actually in the bottle, right? Again, I've talked about this numerous times that because it's not regulated by the FDA, you know, there's some good and bad parts about the FDA, but one of the things that can happen is, you know, people can make a bottle of CBD and it can be whatever the hell's in there is in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so maybe you get what you paid for. Maybe you get more or less of what you paid for. Who knows? Um, but their stuff's tested. So you make sure you actually get, when you look on the back and the label, that's what's in that bottle. Um, check them out at charlottesweb.com. Promo code is chujitsu30, C-H-E-W-J-I-T-S-U-3-0. Also, thanks to my buddy Matt at Epic Roll for supporting the podcast. EpicRollBJJ.com is the website. He has great jiu-jitsu gear, merch, geese, rash guards, t-shirts, whatever you're looking for, jiu-jitsu related. EpicRollBJJ.com is the website. Jiu-Jitsu20, C-H-E-W-J-I-T-S-U is for 20% off the order at checkout. Patreon.com slash the Jiu-Jitsu podcast. If you guys would like to join and become a patron to our uh, podcast, again, it helps support the podcast directly. We give you a bunch of perks and an exclusive library of content uh, along with that membership that, again, has everything from warm-up routines that Eugene's put together as a doctor of physical therapy along with a Jiu-Jitsu black belt. He understands how our bodies move and they're designed to help you improve the way that you move. Really short routines that you can take or that you can use. Seminars that I've recorded 
clips of videos that have never been released before, um, interview, interviews and talks with different guests that we've had on the podcast that are not released anywhere else, all this and more, patreon.com slash the jiu-jitsu podcast. And guys, if you would like to get my daily email, you can join the Chew Crew by going to my website at chujitsu.net slash join. I typically send out an email that's around 250 to maybe 400 words max. It takes you maybe two to three minutes to read. Gives you the whole whole point of the emails to give you an idea to chew on. Uh, it could be everything from books I'm reading or quotes that I've come across through reading. It could be lifting ideas, dieting ideas, all this and more. You can get access to it, and I'll give you some free resources to improve your jiu-jitsu training and adding a little bit of focus to it. When you go to the website at chujitsu.net, C-H-E-W-J-I-T-S-U.net, slash join and join up. And so, guys, with that said, thank you so much for being here. Hopefully you enjoyed the podcast, and we'll talk to you next time. Mm-hmm.